Hello guys, welcome back to Statistical Academy. In this video, I will be covering SAS components, SAS programming interfaces, SAS functionality, SAS program structure, rules of SAS program, SAS names and rules for SAS names, data types in SAS and terminology. For any programming course, not only SAS, I want you to be writing code as much as possible because that's the best way to learn. The SAS software has more than 200 components. Some of the SAS components include Base SAS, SAS Stat, SAS Graph, SAS OR, SAS IML, Enterprise Guide, etc. Let's look at the programming tools we are going to use. SAS has several programming interfaces that you can use to interactively write and submit code. To make you understand, I would like to use general example here. To make a call to send a message, either text or WhatsApp, we all are using different kinds of mobiles. But the goal is same. The same way for SAS, there are different programming interfaces like SAS Studio, SAS Enterprise Guide, SAS Windowing Version. Programming rules for all the interfaces is same. But SAS Studio, SAS Enterprise Guide are included with features such as code completion, formatting and giving descriptions. Now we will see how to use SAS Studio without even downloading anything. I will give the link in the description. Please sign up and you can be able to use SAS Studio. Once you click on the link, you will be getting this page. Please click on access now. If you have an account, please use the credentials and login. If you don't have an account, please create one. Once you log in, please click on SAS Studio, a web-based interface that connects to SAS on a server. Because it runs in a web browser, there is no download and you can use it on any computer. SAS Studio includes the basics you need for programming. An editor to write and submit code, a log to read messages related to the code you submit like errors, notes, warnings, result viewer to view the reports and data that your programs create. It includes features such as code completion, formatting and syntax coloring that make programming much easier. I will use programming process to explain the functionality of SAS language. Before we get started, let us look at the data and program. Now we have an excel file here which has pain scores of some patients who are taking three different types of drug products. Now I don't want you to focus on the programming part. We will be learning the rules of SAS language going forward throughout our course. But for now, I want you to get an idea of what is possible with the SAS language. So in the first section of this program, we are accessing data. These statements are connecting to that Excel file and importing the data in a way that we can use it in the following steps. I'll highlight this section and run it. Now we have imported the Excel file into SAS. I'll go back to the code tab and look at the second section. In section 2, we are exploring the data. We can run this part and see. I wanted to see the count of patients who have taken treatment 1 under pain category 0. In section 3, we are preparing the data for reporting. In the data, treatment IDs are there in the form of numbers. But in the report, I want their actual values. In section 4, we are analyzing the data and making a graph to visualize the results. As we can see in the chart, patient pain score ratings by treatment, the percentage of patients with each pain rating is displayed for each drug classification. You will be able to create all of these results at the end of our course. So before we move further, I wanted to show you the programming process in the SAS studio. Let's write and submit a simple SAS program in SAS Studio and learn how to navigate the interface to examine the results. But first I would like to show you how can we browse data that we might be working with on our SAS program. To do that, I'll start by using the navigation pan on the left side. To select libraries, I'll expand my libraries. And in SAS help library, we have a collection of sample SAS tables. So we will be using few of these in our demonstrations in the videos. I'll double click on the class table and you can see it opens in the data grid. 
In SAS Studio, on the left side, we have a panel that summarizes the columns and their attributes. If you wanted to minimize this, you can do that by clicking on the left arrow and then devote the entire space just to the data. The SAS help dot class table has 19 rows, each representing a different student, their name, sex, age, height and weight. So next, let's write a little program to take a look at this data. I'll choose SAS help dot class tab and by default when a SAS studio opens, the program one tab is open and ready for us to write code. If for some reason you don't have the tab open or you would like to create a new tab to start writing code, you can do that by selecting the new options button and selecting a new SAS program or pressing F4. So let's start by writing a program. This code reads that SAS help dot class table and creates a copy called class. And this code simply prints that class table. So now we have a couple of options to run this program. I can click on this button or I can press F3. I'll click run and results are created. You'll notice within the program one tab, I have code, log, results and output data. Let's start by examining the log. This is where SAS will return message back to us about the program that was run. We will see errors, warnings and notes included here. Our program ran just fine. So we just have notes. You can certainly scroll through the log to read those notes or you can take an advantage of the log summary at the top of the window to navigate to any messages you want. Results includes the report that was created for the new class table. And finally, output data displays the new table. Now you will notice there is some extra space in the columns. We may want to minimize that space to optimize the display and see more data. We can do that by right clicking on any of the columns and choosing the size grid columns to content. Or if you want the setting always be in effect, we can choose more application options, preferences and size grid columns to content and save. At this point, I'm going back to my code and I wanted to show you how you can run only a selection of the program. This is an important concept because we will use it quite a bit in our practices. I'll highlight proc print and hit F3 just to run the selected portion. Of course, I could also click on the run button. You can see I have a results tab that shows the report that was created from the proc print code. And you'll notice the output data does not display because I did not run that section of that code. Finally, the last thing I wanted to show you is how you can look at more than one item at the same time. If I click results, I can drag it off to the side of the window or bottom portion. And you will notice that it shades a section of the window. And when I let go of my mouse, you will see the results tab or split off to the side. So I can see both results and code simultaneously. To bring it back to the same window, I can click results and simply drag it back. So that's how simple and easy it is to run SAS code in SAS Studio. SAS program structure. Let's start by taking a high level look at the structure of the SAS program. A SAS program consists of a sequence of steps. Each step in the SAS program performs a specific task. There are two kinds of steps in the SAS programs data step, proc or procedure step. A SAS program can contain any combination of data steps and proc steps depending on the tasks you want to perform. Data and proc steps get their name from the keywords that begin the first statement in the step, data or proc. Most steps end with a run statement and a few proc steps end with a quit statement. This program has three steps, one data step, and two proc steps. A data step generally reads data from an input source and process it and creates a SAS table. A data step might also filter rows, compute new columns, join tables and perform other manipulations. In this program, the data step is creating an output table and adding a new column. A proc or procedure step processes a table in a specific predefined way. SAS has dozens of procedures that generate reports and graphs, manage data or perform complex statistical analysis. 
In this program, the PROC print step generates a list of the all rows and columns in the data. And the PROC mean step calculate basic summary statistics. Now let's zoom in a bit and look at the structure of steps. Each step consists of a sequence of statements and most statements start with the keywords that's a part of the SAS language. The data step has four statements, a data statement, a set statement, an assignment statement and a run statement. Data, set and run are keywords. The assignment statement creates a new column and it doesn't start with a keyword. The first PROC step has two statements, the PROC print statement and the run statement. The last PROC step has three statements, the PROC means statement, the WHERE statement and a run statement. The really most important thing to remember here is the all statement must end with a semicolon. In addition to data and PROC steps, a SAS program can also contain global statements. These statements can be outside data and PROC steps and they typically define some option or setting for the SAS session. Global statements do not need a run statement after them. Rules of SAS program Every statement must end with semicolon. Data step and PROC step must end with run statement. But some PROC steps should end with quit statement as well. SAS programming is not case sensitive. One statement can be written in multiple lines. Multiple statements can be written in single line. SAS is color sensitive program. Keywords are in dark blue color. Statements are in light blue color. Data background is in yellow color. Data location is in pink color. Terminology in SAS. Columns are called variables. Rows are called observations. Tables are called datasets in the SAS. Data types in SAS. SAS has two data types. Character data, numeric data. Character variables are left aligned and numeric variables are right aligned in the datasets. Missing values in numeric variables are represented by periods and missing values in the character variables are represented by blanks. Rules for SAS variable names and dataset names. Names must be less than or equal to 32 characters length. SAS names must start with alphabet or underscore. SAS names should contain alphabets, numerics and underscores but not any special characters. SAS names are not case sensitive but data is case sensitive. Character variables are assigned inside the quotes double or single. Numeric variables are assigned directly. Thank you for watching. Continuation will be uploaded soon.